If you don't hold the consequences, then your boundary means nothing. The narcissist will run over it every single time. Make a boundary with consequences. Hold the consequences. All right, so if you've been around, you've also seen a couple of videos that I've done about narcissists and like social media and stuff like that. And a lot of times people come up and they're like saying like, oh, like my narcissist didn't have a phone. My narcissist didn't have social media, all this kind of stuff. And then they come back later after the divorce has been settled, after the affair been exposed. And they're like, you know, you're right. Like he actually had a second phone that I never knew about. He actually had three other Instagram accounts that I didn't know and he was stalking other women and communicating with them on different platforms. Or he actually had a Facebook account or she actually had it hidden on her phone where she could log in with twin, uh, with Tinder and I never saw it. You know, So there's a lot of different aspects that we've talked about on this platform about narcissists and social media and things like that. But what about like privacy? You know, how they invade and infiltrate your life when it comes to privacy. Because with a narcissist, everything in their life, every aspect of the narcissist's life is private. It's closed off. It's controlled. Like you're not allowed in. Because the narcissist hates vulnerability. They hate being honest. They hate letting someone in that can actually see all the shit that's actually inside them, all the shit that they've actually done. Okay. So with that, the narcissism is, the narcissist is looking at, hey, all this stuff is private. It's closed off. However, all of your stuff is not. That's why like, you'll see a narcissist like throw a fit when you say, hey, show me your phone. If they already haven't taken measures to be able to hide and distract the stuff that's on their phone, they might get a little like nervous because they've got something to hide. Maybe you've already expressed concern or you've already expressed like questions about it. So they probably already have that like set aside. They probably already have that figured out. They probably have the apps downloaded, the apps hidden. You can drop apps into like hidden, uh, hidden lock boxes that you never be able to figure out. There's a lot of different things out there, okay? So the narcissist might have already done something like that. But what's it look like when it's flipped around? When the narcissist comes and they start going through your stuff. They start going through your phone. They start going through your social media. So you're like, oh, my narcissist wouldn't do that, or oh, they didn't do that. You might be surprised. Narcissists a lot of times are very, very observant. You know why? A narcissist is going to observe every little thing you do because every little sign that you show them, every little telltale emotion, perception, is one aspect that they can learn and they can control you. You might have heard the phrase before, knowledge is power. A lot of times for a narcissist, that is very true because the more knowledge they have about you, the more intimate details, thoughts, pictures, you know, words that you've expressed and ideas and concerns and fears, the more opportunity they have to be able to manipulate, to be able to pull those levers, to be able to control you. So with a narcissist, they're very private. Like everything on them is private. However, with you, it's not going to be private. That's not a possibility. So for a narcissist, like as a narcissist, like I would have to know where you're going. I have to know where you're going, what you're doing, who you're going to be with, how long you're going to be there, how that interaction went, and what transpired between the two of you. And if it's another person like opposite gender, like, oh, we're going to be talking because you're probably cheating on me or you're probably having an affair, or you're probably just hooking up with someone, or maybe it's just an emotional affair, or maybe you're trying to step out of the marriage. Like whatever it might be, I've got to know because I need that control. I need that power over you about what's going on. So as a result, I'll start to invade your privacy. I'll start to invade the things that should be sacred, the things that you should be able to hold back and say, no, this is the line of a healthy and respectful and a trusting relationship. And if you don't want to adhere to that, well, the narcissist is going to blow right through that. And they might blow right through it with you knowing because it's out of an argument. It's out of a rage. They're like, fine, show me your phone. Like, I don't believe you. You're just cheating on me. A lot of times projecting, projection because they're already cheating on you. Um, but they'll go through your phone. They'll go through your Instagram. They'll start looking through and be like, oh, like I can see like you've done this, you've done this. Like all those, all those accounts, everything is like tracked. And if you know how to manipulate those accounts, if you know how to work those accounts, a person can go into your phone and see every single post that you've liked, every single thing that you've shared, every single thing that you've scrolled past in one sense, and be able to see who you are, what's going on, and understand more about you to manipulate and control. 
Or they might go in, they might look at it and be like, oh, like I know this person that she's liking, so she must be having an affair. I see all these guys that she's liking, so this must be happening. I see all these girls that he's looking at, so something must be going on. And they will make stuff up just to be able to control you. But ultimate thing is they'll invade your privacy. Anything that's open is free game. Anything that's not open is obligated to show the narcissist. That's what they think. They think that what is theirs is theirs and what's yours is theirs. And that's how they treat everything. Privacy, social media, money, time, anything. Because they're always taking. They're always taking that stuff. So with 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 privacy and with social stuff, like you can see it in different aspects in like Instagram and Facebook and all these type of things where they can go in, they can look and they can like stalk in one sense. And they'll do like pre-stalking. They'll stalk you before they actually leave or they'll stalk someone before they actually get with them to be able to see what they like, how they interact, things like that, to be able to learn about the other person. And oftentimes they'll invade their privacy to a point of they'll keep things on their phones. They'll go into your phone and they'll take screenshots of you texting another person and then they'll share that with another person so that they can triangulate, so they can set a wedge in between you guys. They'll go into your phone and they'll see who you've been calling and then they'll make up an elaborate story that you're actually out with this person cheating. They'll do so many different manipulative things to be able to offset you and be able to put you on the defensive so that you don't have time to take an actual look of where you are and say, wait a second, this is a line and this is being crossed. Like this is kind of crazy. We need to stop this right now. It's not just with social media. It could be anything else. There's been many one-on-ones where I've been talking to people where they said, I actually took my car into the shop and they found a GPS tracker hidden it. They found a way that my narcissist was tracking me anywhere I went. Because a narcissist wants that control. They want that validation. They want that knowledge. Maybe you've already broken up with a narcissist. You've actually gotten free from those different aspects. And then you're inundated with the fake phone calls, with the fake accounts, with all the profiles that they make to be able to still interact with you, to be able to still connect with you, to be able to still get a reaction out of you or push your buttons or make you feel unsafe. Sometimes this obsession will continue going further and further to where it becomes in an abusive relationship or needs restraining orders or they get thrown in jail, all these type of stuff because they don't let go of those situations. <coughs> and they'll keep trying and they'll keep trying to get with you, to be with you, to hoover you, to just tick you off, whatever it might be. A lot of times they'll get to a place where they're starting to threaten to share stuff on social media. Like, you need to get back with me or I'm going to blackmail you. Like, I'm going to show this stuff to the world. Or maybe they just go out and they do their own smear campaign and they just badmouth you to everybody out there. A lot of the stuff that narcissist does is collect information to be able to use and abuse it to you. Be careful. Be careful about what you let another person into your life. That doesn't mean you need to be closed off and be so private that nobody can ever get to you, but it means you need to set healthy boundaries early on in the relationship that establish who you are, that establish your self-worth, your self-confidence, and make sure the other person knows, hey, this is who I am, these are the boundaries I have, this is the direction I'm going in life. If you don't like that, that's fine. That means we're just not gonna do it together. Because more often the narcissist will come in and manipulate and control the situation and veer people off from the path that they've been chosen to go down. They'll veer people off from their passions, from their dreams, from their desires, and all of a sudden the person's standing there with nothing left because the narcissist left them and they're like, I have accomplished nothing and I've gotten nowhere because of this other person. You ask me how I know that? Because I've done that. And I've sidelined people's careers. I've hurt people's relationships. I've destroyed friendships. And I've hurt the ones that I love. And I've done that over multiple years, over multiple cycles. And there's different aspects that each and every day I'm working to grow and change myself to be the best person that I can. And it comes with dealing out and pulling an old demon out of the closet every day and getting rid of them. And even that, it still feels like there's thousands more that I gotta work through. I know this because it's happened in my life where my wife hasn't got to the goals and the dreams and the thoughts and the things she desires because of me. 
because my priorities were more important. My ideals were more important. The love that she was supposed to give me was more important. My career was more important. My workaholism was more important. I was more important, and that's what I thought. Please be careful about a narcissist that comes into your life and invades your privacy, because they will. So set boundaries and keep yourself safe. Remember when you set boundaries, watch a couple of my videos about boundaries, but when you set boundaries, keep clear consequences and hold the consequences. If you don't hold the consequences, then your boundary means nothing. The narcissist will run over it every single time. Make a boundary with consequences, hold the consequences. Hey, if you like what you see here, please do a favor and just subscribe to my channel. Leave some comments down below to let other victims in the comments know they're not alone. Would love to talk to you more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. If you're searching for that healing, if you want to try to figure out how to deal with getting out from a narcissist, how to deal with the aftermath of the trauma bond, of the things going through your head, then please reach out to me. Go to rawmotivations.com, click on one-on-one -on -one co one -on -one coaching that I have on there, and we can talk. Set up a time. We'd love to be able to talk with you. I do talk at times with narcissists. I don't talk to them that often because a lot of times they don't like to talk to me, and most of the time they're just looking for self-validation, and I never talk to them again. But that is up there, okay? Uh, if you would, follow me on other platforms. We got TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We'd love to have you follow and be a part of our community there. If you want to be a part of a community of like-minded people that's actually working through the abuse, working through the aftermath of that, then go on to Apple and go on to Google Play if you have an Android and download the NARC app, N-A-R-C, Narcissistic Abuse Recovery Community. And on there is a group of people that are striving to grow and change every single day. And they're on there encouraging and helping each other to stay no contact, to keep writing down the truth, to keep the exercise of figuring out between the fable and the facts of what actually is true. We'll love to have you part of that community. It's been out, as at the time of this video, it's been out for about like 22 days. We've got over a thousand people on the app. We're excited to see more and more each day that are trying to find healing, growth, and change. Got a ton of more stuff coming out. Got a gaslighting course coming out, a cognitive dissonance, uh, one about boundaries, a lot of different stuff that's coming out to the app. This is rolling out slow right now as we get all these creators that are helping um, work on all the courses. Anyways, that's all I got. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.